clothing store owner Laura McNutt wants to hire back her only employee, but the amount she could pay her using the government's wage subsidy isn't as much as the CERB. She's very prepared and wants to work, um, but I, as, a, as the business owner, don't, I, 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 I can't ethically ask her to earn less. Federal wage subsidy pays up to 75% of an employee's wages and encourages the businesses to pay the rest. The federal government is counting on it to reconnect people to their jobs. That wage subsidy is going to be a really important part of the coming months of recovery. But uptake has been slow compared to the CERB. It was launched first and nearly 8 million people have applied. But so far only about 1.7 million have returned to their jobs through the wage subsidy. Today, the government announced it would extend the wage subsidy until August, hoping that certainty would convince more employers to sign up. You now have some runway to catch your breath as you get restarted. They're also tweaking the criteria and including previously ineligible employers like amateur sports organizations and groups like the National Ballet School. So please, bring back your employees. But in New Brunswick, jobs are going unfilled and the Premier is blaming the CERB. I know many people are on the four-month program right now that the federal government supplied and feel little obligation or reason to, to move in, in, um, into a, a, um, a job at this stage. Workers can potentially earn more under the wage subsidy, something the finance minister said today should be an incentive. That said, we are looking carefully at the relationship between these two benefits. The federal government is still working on the crucial question of how long to keep offering the CERB, knowing that millions are relying on it, but wanting those who can to transition back to a job. Catherine Cullen, CBC News, Ottawa.